Yo! What's up, T-Dunn? This man. We are looking to scariest moments in NBA history, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to my boy. Yo, what's going on? Shout out to my boy, Dom. I'm saying we're going to get into the video. These are the scariest moments. In scariest the moments My in NBA history. And that is some serious concern. Mm. I'm going to be in a hospital thing on the hospital door. And you know, ask him, am I gonna die? Am I gonna die? I'm gonna have a shortness of breath. At first, the time Tyrese Halliburton almost had a season ending injury. Mm. Six point Boston lead. Ooh. Shoes lost grip. Now he went on the side of his shoes. Painful. Oh but not my as painful God. as Steph Curry at number 14. Because when he played against the Suns, he broke his left hand. I love how ah. did that. He closed out on the shooting hand side. Oh. Ooh. With a lot of contact. Uh -oh. He's holding that left wrist. Oh. Yeah. Ah. Scared. But some get even worse, like number 13. Because Chris Dunn went up for a dunk and almost lost all his teeth. Oh. 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 Boy, he fell on his face. Oh, man, he hurt. Wow. He fell into the Oh, my oh, God. Man. Damn, that could have ended much I wish I'd never worse. seen that. But he's not the only one in danger. Because for number 12, Nerlens Noel hit the ground so hard, this. he was out cold. Steven Adams. Why are we watching this? Why are we watching this? Guys, guys, met him at the rim. Nerlens Noel, he hit the oh floor God. hard. That fall looked scary, but number mm. 11 almost ended Jeremy Lin's career. Because as soon as he came down from a layup, you could tell something was up. Lin goes down hard. You could hear the bang as he hit the floor. Mm. Oh, boy. Jeremy Lin is down. Yeah, Lin knew exactly what was going on because the fall turned out to be a season-ending injury. Oh, my but God. Look, at least he wasn't at the peak of his career because at number 10, a player had a career-ending injury yeah, born Curry. in the 2019 NBA Finals. No. Play. See, in game six, Clay Thompson was going for an easy dunk when yeah, instead, I mean, yeah. it still changed one, him forever. Still got that championship ring. Thompson running the floor and a foul. It didn't even look that bad. Thompson grabs his left knee. But he's bad. Writhing in pain. Steph Curry slamming the ball on the court so upset. And Mike, if he leaves, mm, I he seen can't it though. come back in. So if he doesn't shoot the free throws, he's he lost that game. The game. He was walking to the locker room and then somebody yelled something. He turns around. He hurt though. To shoot the free throws, then you can take him out, obviously. <laughs> and he hits the free throw. Hits another one. To me, I'm committing the foul. But Clay Thompson looked like he can act actually survive on the floor right now. He's staying in the game. And there's the uh -huh. foul. The man tore his ACL and stood up like it was nothing and tried to continue playing. It's no wonder he's demanding more respect. And Dang. respect is something Joel Embiid needs to learn all ACL. about. For number nine, he almost killed another player. See, during the playoffs, I know they're the going to have him. Um, he lost his balance and ended up him. almost crushing Grant Williams' head. A seven foot shot a moment ago. Almost a turnover. And B oh falls to the court. Oh, oh wow. Oh, man. Dude had a 280-pound giant stepping on his head and said this. I know you go for the ball. Yeah, I'm trying to go. Like, jump over, but I ain't going to go for you. Hey, brother. Boy, you battle for it, bro. That mofo was a real one. But the Utah Jazz had a real one too at number eight because their team was close to being wiped That's crazy. off the earth. See, in 2019, the Jazz were getting ready to head for a road game against the Memphis Grizzlies. While in the air, though, some players saw oh an my explosion God. when one of the engines started burning and the plane started going down. And everyone was panicking because they felt like the plane was about to break apart in midair. Now, luckily, oh the pilots were God. able to emergency land and everyone was safe. But it had a lot of players shook. So I text my mom, my sister, hey, this is it. Like, <laughs> Like, I love y'all, like, Dang. engines on fire, whatever, whatever. And if you ever see my mom ask her, they thought I was joking. And they laughing, like, ha, ah, like, what? I'm like, no, I'm dead serious. Like, I'm the plane's really yeah. about to, like, go down. Like, the plane just exploded. And they were like, so everybody's freaking out. So we're, we're not too high. It's high enough where you can still send messages. That's mm -hmm. how, so I could see the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which made it even worse. Cause I'm yeah. like, I could see the Salt Lake. I could see all this. Dang. Like, Man, you can put the plane down over here. And, it was, I think it was 30 minutes. We were 30. When I started my poker journey, I, knew I learned it. the hard way that was losing money. But now there's an easy way to get started I and knew just that. play for fun. 35 minutes we were in that plane. 
and it was it was probably the scariest moment of my life for me because I felt helpless. There yeah. was nothing I could do at this point. Because mm -hmm. I'm sitting here like this light that's not in my hands. The pilot's mm -hmm. not speaking. The, no one's speaking. And then finally the pilot's like, we've had the engine explode, whatever, we're gonna turn back around, trying to lose some fuel. Damn, they are lucky they are still mm. here. And so is Chris Bosch at Less. 7 because he was Not just lucky. minutes away from dying. See, in 2015, the Miami Heat played the Dallas Mavericks in a regular season game. And after the game, Chris Bosch felt something was off. Well, I developed uh, blood clots. I was uh, mm. sideline with blood clots. I missed uh, the second half of the season. Dang. Um, and that's just, you know, something I had to battle back from. I had a pulmonary embolism uh, oh, my left my lung. God. So, you know, I had to uh, kind of, I've been bouncing back and it's been a long process, but it's been great. Yeah, all his blood clots were removed and he was cleared by doctors to go out and play. However, in February 2016, it would all change for the worse. Cause heading into All-Star Weekend, Bosch felt something in his calf. I was practicing for the three-point competition and my calf was sore like the next morning. So I said, man, let me not even mess with this. Let me get it checked out. Uh, let me get a um, ultrasound. Cause I was, you know, paranoid uh, pretty much from last year and I got one and it's like oh yeah it's a little clot right there when Dang. you heard blood clot again what did you think you have to understand that it went from being sore in my calf to like, oh, well, you can't play anymore. Bosch's life was flipped on Dang. his head because it turned out he had to not only sit out for the remainder of the season, he would not be clear for heat training camp in 2017. And on February 12th, Bosch had no options left but to retire. You come to the Dang, realization that bro. there is no perfect ending. You know, um, I sad. think we all, it's like a Never knew that story. I know he played with LeBron. Of, of the old timer going around the, you know, going Chris around the Fox. gym one more for one more lap, you know, and, and hopefully winning a championship on the way out. You know, that doesn't happen. Man, I guess the you got most Kobe important in the back, thing in life really up. is Kobe. family and health. But look, sometimes players just make dumb decisions. Because for number six, Kelly Oubre almost lost his NBA career. See, in 2023, he had just signed a new contract with the Sixers. But with one catch, he had to stop his hobby of reckless bike riding. Crazy part Dang. is, that clause was just during the season. So all he had to do was wait for the season to end. That's when Kelly did the opposite. Because while out on a bike ride, a car crashed into oh. his leg. <sighs> You. Now up to this point, Kelly thought nothing bad would come of this. He would just blame it on a hit and run while he was out on the walk. Until suddenly the police got involved and decided mm. to launch an investigation. And after reviewing surveillance footage, they saw no hit and run where Ubre reported it happened. I mean, the situation was getting out of hand. So reporters tried to get the truth from his coach. Uh, can you address the report that Kelly Ubre's uh, injuries did not occur, according to the police. They had found no evidence that it was with a hit and run. Dang. I would. Uh, not I mean, it kind of was that. a hit and run, though. Don't, I don't. I don't have an answer to that other than uh, to leave what's been reported so far. But because there was Dang. no evidence or eyewitnesses, all people could do was just assume what really happened. Somebody damn near hit you, like <laughs> flush. And evidently, the side of the mirror, the, the, the mirror caught the side of your body. And because of that, you know, you end up going to the hospital, but still and all, it was hit and run. So they ran away. They drove away. Yeah. So they hit you by accident. You know how much of a speed they had to be going through for the side, for the side mirror of a car to hit you and not to hospitalize you? I'm sorry, but something's a little fishy. Mm. Yeah, Ubre got off easy, unlike Jason Williams at number five, because we got to talk about the time his life dramatically but it still changed was a after a tragic accident. See, in 2000, Williams had to retire from professional basketball after suffering countless injuries, and his post-retirement was not pretty. I mean, this dude was out partying pretty much every night, Dang. but on the 14th of February 2002, it would all take a turn for the worse. See, Williams had a bunch of friends who were hosting a huge party at his mansion, but as the night went on, all hell broke loose, because during the party, Williams was impressing his guests by showing them his shotgun. Woo! Out of nowhere, Williams lost control of the gun and accidentally fired and killed one of his friends on the spot. Mm -hmm. Eventually, though, police showed up. That's when Williams attempted to cover up the incident by placing the gun in his friend's hands to make it appear as if he had accidentally shot himself. I went to my bedroom and I had my shotguns for my skeet machine uh, in there and there was a Yo. bullet still in one of the shotguns uh, from shooting skeet early in the day i take responsibility i'm not gonna say somebody did that that and that i'm supposed to look down the barrel 
I was showing people guns, here goes a gun, here, look at this one, you know, this coach gave me this, this is beautiful, this, and when I went to slap the gun closed to hand it, I didn't even know that Mr. Christophe was in the house there. The gun went off and hit Mr. Christophe in the chest, and uh, it killed him instantly. Yo. I then jumped, ran out the house. Oh my God. Jumped into the swimming pool, came back up, and we called 911 instantly after it happened. But I just panicked. I did a cowardly act of not staying there after oh an accident God. and taking it. I tried to cover it up. And Dang. I, I ended up going to trial for this, right? Um, the trial took eight years. Yeah, and things eventually got worse for William. Because after eight years of trial, he was sentenced to five years in prison. But at least he didn't almost die twice. Because we got to talk about the time John Wall almost lost his life. See, in 2017, at least he got five years. That's not even that much. Reward Wall for his crazy play by offering him a $170 million contract extension. But just a few months after the extension, John Wall was hit with his first blow. Mine's been a similar story. Yo. Everyone's Another one. About the Olympics Got it. On I have never seen it. Every time, John Wall Who's that? already John Wall. out for the rest of this season because of his injured heel. Now he needs surgery for a rupture of the Achilles after slipping in his home, according to the team. Yeah, this was probably the worst thing that could happen to Wall, or so he thought. Because not only did he spend 12 months on the sideline, he had to also endure losing three of the most important people in his life, his best friend, Demaya Nelson, and shortly mm. after, his mother and grandmother. Mm. Dang. Buck, obviously, John's very emotional, guys. We'll send it back to you. Wall had hit a new bottom he didn't know existed. And just to make things even worse, the team he had sacrificed everything for traded him after 10 years to the worst franchise at the time. Well, for my kids, I wouldn't be here. Not to be man. honest, you know what I mean? Like, like I said before, you're in a dark place. Like, people don't know I had to my Achilles, had four infections, I always had to cut my foot off. Mm -hmm. And my career's about to be over. My mom died of breast cancer, and then she passed. Mm -hmm. Then I get traded from DC to Houston. I mean, where I've been for 10 years, then my grandma died a year later. Then I'm not playing basketball, you know what I mean? I'm in a bad spot. I'm like, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, why all this got to happen to me? Right. Dude, back to back. Like, I go from the second best player in the East, top 10, top 15 player in the league, then the air thing's gone, you know what I mean? To like basically rock bottom. And the scariest part of all this, Dang. Wall later explained that this wasn't even the only time he tried to end it all. I have 10 more watches. I'm lit. I think I'm having fun. I go outside through all that, you know? <laughs> I'm like, man, I'm messed up. Like, I can add him up, but why? But just like, uh, speaking of that moment, like, my mom was my best friend. Like, I still got her same phone number saved. I text it yes, every morning. Me too. I call it. I used to talk to my mom five, six times a day. So I know how it is, and I'm trying to tell people mental health is serious. So I had to yes. go get a therapist after that. Yeah, me too. Like, if it wasn't for my two boys, Dang. I would have my head twice. And a lot of people that's close to me and my friends at the time didn't know. And uh, not to branch off, but I mean, like, I had to be That's there crazy, bro. Throwing up gang signs and stuff like that. That's when I was in my darkest moment, mm -hmm. trying to figure out to find happiness. Go, go back, go back though. You said you had a in your head. Yeah, and man, if I take myself away Dang. from this earth, I'm, I'm failing my kids. Like yeah. who's gonna be here to raise yeah. them? Damn, man. Honestly, just hearing this story was crazy. But at number three, another NBA player was attacked by gang. Oh my god. See, Paul Pierce came into the league as the tenth overall pick back in 1998, and he instantly tore it up. But on the 25th of September 2000, everything he had worked for was about to come crashing down. Because while in his third NBA season, Paul was headed to a nightclub with a couple of friends, not knowing it would turn into a life-threatening situation. You get stabbed mm -hmm. 11 times. Oh my God. Number one, how do you still manage to play 82 games? It's beyond me. Uh, and I know you've talked about this story before, mm -hmm. but like, 11 times? <laughs> What's something from Dab? that story that people don't know? And, and like I said, I also want to know, how did you manage to play 82 games? I don't know, right? Jeez. I don't even know how I'm alive, truthfully, when I look back at it. You know, I think to just God the, be the glory, God, bro. You know, I'm yeah. a true believer in God. He, he knows when your time is, and it wasn't my time. And I think the only thing, let me tell you something, Dre, what people don't know, but I haven't spoke on 
I talked about the incident and being in the club and, and you know, being stabbed by like multiple men and three different knives. Multiple and men? Well, people don't know, I played because I played through pain. But that was the only thing that my, being on the court was the only thing that gave me peace. I might get copied you, you on You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> I'm traumatized. I'm, I'm in my house. I'm, I'm, I'm scared. But at the same time, I'm paranoid. I, I, I'm like, I have to wear like a vest. And this is what people don't know. I have to wear a vest under which leave my uniform. So like a lot of times Jeez. if I take a charge or I go into the paint, I felt that. It wasn't Dang. all the way healed. And I had to just mentally play through that because I know I wanted to be on the court because that's the only piece I got from not thinking about what happened. But for that three hours, that three, four hours, that gave me peace. After the incident, Paul Pierce was rushed to the that's hospital. Crazy. That's when doctors found out that Pierce had been stabbed 11 times and hit over the head with a bottle that cut parts of his face. The crazy part about it, man, and how I respect life and I appreciate life so much, it helped me appreciate life. Um, he a warrior, bro. I, I, I get home after two days in the hospital. And I'm seeing the news, and they show a kid, teenager, got stabbed twice and died. Mm. And I'm like, damn. damn. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh man, I'm I'm lucky, man. I'm lucky. Bless. I, I can't, I can't let my family down. Putting myself in these positions. Right. I mean, you know, stuff happens, though. You know, I'm still a kid, hanging out, having fun. I mean, you don't. That's know. That's crazy, bro. You don't know, and um, it just, it really changed my life. I don't what? think I went out. Like, people don't know this, but I, I actually carried a gun for two years right mm -hmm. after that. I was so paranoid. Pierce really got a second chance on life. And so did number two. Because what if I told mm -hmm. you that Bronny James was close to losing his life? What? So on 24th of July, 2023, Bronny James was a freshman at the University oh, yeah, of Southern yeah, California going to practice like every other day. But you. this wasn't going to be like any other practice. Bro, so. Okay, your ambulance here now. Okay, all right, sir. All right, sir. I'm going to send help there. Hey, but doctors say it's too early for a prognosis on Bronny's recovery, but it is worth noting that multiple athletes have Jeez. come back from cardiac arrest to play at an elite level, most notably DeMar Hamlin of the Buffalo Bills. Now, yeah. obviously, this whole situation was scary for not just Bronny, but also for his family. But through it all, he made a swift comeback, looking even stronger than ever. And during the 2024 NBA draft, Bronny made his dream come true when he was picked up by the Lakers in the second round, making it the first time yeah. a father and son duel will be playing on the same team at the same time. I knew they would have mentioned that. But I did Hey, that's true. Damn, he turned it all around. But for number one, another player never got a second chance. See, this is Reggie Lewis. And in 1987, he was drafted to the Porzingis. So and this man, Reggie, was not your average he got guy. Bad. He always had one goal in sight, and that was to save his family from the hood. And that's exactly what he did. Because the first thing he the bought hood. was a house for his mom. So now with Jeez. his family taken care of, he could finally focus on his game. And in 1992, he was a star. But on the 29th of April, 1993, during a playoff game against the Charlotte Hornets, this happened. It. Oh, he just passed out. Nobody checking on him. Reggie was quickly sent to the hospital where he underwent a series of tests. And the results from the tests were nothing but bad news. See, the doctor said that Lewis had had a potentially life-threatening heart condition, which only meant one thing. His career was over. But Lewis Dang. wasn't ready to give up just yet. And on the 27th of July, 1993, he and his buddy played some pickup games at the University of Brandy. But after just five minutes, his heart couldn't take it anymore. And after two hours of constant attempts of trying to revive him, doctors gave in and pronounced him dead at the age of 27. What? I just can't really understand how much pain Reggie's family must have gone through during this time. But look, I know this shit was emotional what? to say the least. But if you want to bring your mood back up, then I really recommend you watch this video right here. Dang, bro. He died over a pickup basketball game, bro. That's kind of crazy. I just want to lay up. Got it like that. But if I lay up, praise you. So glad I got here with these guys. Praise God. Yeah, not the last guy, though. <laughs> It's not funny, bro. But yeah, T Donation, man. Uh, that's the end of the video. And um, like, share, comment, and subscribe. Let me know if y'all want to see more videos like this. T Donation, man. We out. Peace.